Hello everyone, we thought that it would be interesting to show you the iteration between the V1 of the Pro on my right and the V6 of the Pro on my left. That's going to be the beta unit um, that's going to be delivered in about a month. Uh, so we're going to walk through every single component and see what changed and why we made those decisions at the beginning and why now it looks like this. And you're going to see there's pretty much not a single part that is still the same. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. So if we start by the rear wheel, this one has a 1200 watt motor, just like the V6 but it was first of all a single motor and the tire was two inch wide you can see it's a lot more uh, narrower than on the v6 um, and it changed the style completely on the v6 it looked way beefier and it fits better with the overall style of the scooter this one also didn't have any self uh, e-link tires we were not able to put it inside this one and it was a tube uh, tire so there was a tube inside and in the front well it's a honeycomb airless tire um, so it was not the most comfortable and again you want the self-healing tires and even more in that price it should be included. Just above that is the fender. So this one is a single side fender like we had on the Phantom uh, previously. Um, you don't want that again it's really shaky um, and it's not really uh, firm. It's not covering the whole surface of the tire so the water is going to go basically on your back and on the deck. Uh, that's not ideal as well and for something that is IP66 that you're going to bring in the water you want something that's going to offer complete coverage. We have the motor wire too coming on the up and then on the fork and it's being held in place with zip tie. That design completely changed on the V6 it's integrated inside the fork. It looks way better you cannot even see where the wire is on the V6. And lastly the drum brake. This one didn't have any brake on the motor, it was just the motor and the front drum brake was uh, on the front compared to the V6 that you have dual drum brake. Um, so it's safer for those speed. Again, you probably never use the drum brake, but if you have to use them, I would prefer to have dual drum brake going at 65 kilometers an hour rather than a single one. Then if we look at the actual fork itself, you can see this one is a lot thinner than on the V6. Um, the factor of safety when we do our analysis to see how much weight it can withstand, uh, was just way too low on the V1, so we had to beef it up. And the fact that we were adding channel inside the forks to pass the motor cable, um, that meant that we needed to beef it up because we are removing some metal to pass that wire. For the suspension itself, on the V1, it was a bit too loose and there was no adjustment to make it tighter. Compare on the V6, well, we changed the rubber block basically on every iteration, even the V6 compared to the V5 as a different rubber block. And we added six adjustment screws under to tighten it if it ever become loose and you can adjust it depending on your weight as well so again this couple with the front hydraulic suspension that's going to offer really a riding experience that is tailored to your weight then if we look at the rear footrest this one was way closer to the tire uh, and you can see that it actually rubbed under and um, that was at the christmas party that we had here there was two people on the the pro and the tire was rubbing on the rear footrest um, basically the matching and the paint of the footrest so on the v2 the v3 the v4 all the way until the v6 we added the rear suspension blocker so even if i remove the rubber block completely there is no way for the tire to touch the rear footrest um, because there's a stopper built in the actual geometry of the scooter and on top of that we move the footrest up so we gain some um, travel distance for the suspension and also ensure that it's never going to touch and we needed to do this because we close the fender all the way back on the v6 so you need to create more space between the tire and the footrest. Then if we look at the deck, the way that the V1 and the V6 are built is completely different. The footrest on the V1 is attached to the main body. So it, you can remove the lid of the scooter, the deck, and the footrest is going to stay there and it's going to be with the bottom deck part. Compared to the V6, if you remove the lid, the cover, the footrest is going to come with it. Uh, that's way better for waterproofing and also assembly it's better so completely different and that allow me to do better waterproofing on the light around the footrest as well compared to this model that was just way too hard to assemble and then for the deck itself there's three main change there's a light on the deck that is completely different again you can watch all our walkthrough video but from the v1 to the v6 they all have different light 
all have different um, diffusers as well. On the V1, when we were writing with it, there was only, it was either white when it was not writing or doing RGB motion when writing. And that was basically the whole control we had over those colors compared to the V6 that you can decide the color that you want in the app. You can decide the turning signal color, the brake color, um, the ambient color, you can change the color of the stem as well. So this one offers a lot more um, choice and that's because we develop our own light box inside that's connected to the app and allow you to customize it however you want. Then we have the kickstand. The kickstand, again, they are all different on all the models. The main difference between the V1 and the V6 is there is no rubber on the V1. So it's metal directly on the floor and that was damaging the floors. Uh, and also the way to access the kickstand, it was only one knob on the left side compared to the V6 that you have two knobs. So if you're on the right side of the scooter, you can put the kickstand and same thing on the left side. Uh, compared to the V1, you needed to go on the left side and then you could put the kickstand. And also the spring system that is propping open and close the kickstand, it, it's way stronger on the V6 and it's gonna last much longer. On the V1, it was rattling. So super annoying when you get bumps, you can hear it. Um, so on the V6, adding the rubber, well, it's going to create um, a gap and a protection between the two middle part, the kickstand and the body, uh, but also the spring keeping it tighter when closed uh, is going to make it a lot more enjoyable and you won't hear the rattling. Then we have the neck of the scooter. On the neck, there's two main differences. This one was welded directly to the body and that's okay. That's how most people do it if it's not screwed. For us, we wanted to add an extra safety and also ensure that the way it's welded is 100% the same and consistent throughout the production. So on the V5 and the V6, we added a big screw that's gonna hold the neck in place and then it's gonna be welded. So it's always consistent how it's welded compared to the V1 that sometimes the neck could be shifted a little bit to the left, to the right, and you have to reject those pieces uh, in the incoming QC at the factory. On the neck itself, there's also the charging port. On this one, you can see it's a simple jack port around one that you can charge up to I think 2 amp with it max compared to this one well this one can go up to 6 amp and it's also more waterproof it looks better the whole system of the lid opening and closing uh, just look more premium than this one that's pretty much it for the neck and there's a ton of other things like the we thicken it so we were able to fit a, a bigger battery and have more space inside the way that the neck is actually manufactured uh, it's forged in CNC and we need to keep some place to CNC it. This one is a lot more solid than this one. It's about three times stronger than the V1. So that's great to see. Um, the front letter, we open uh, the custom mold to fit that big neck compared to the first one that was just CNC'd. So for the neck itself, that's pretty much it. And now if we look at the front suspension and geometry, just looking at it, you see it's completely different. This one didn't even have a motor in the front. Again, when we started doing the Pro, the original name was the Explorer and it was supposed to replace, well, the Explorer 2020 and 2021. That's why it was 52 volt, single motor, 1200 watt. So this one, the forks is so thin that it's scary. The front suspension was horrible and that this one exploded on me when I, I was riding it. And it's because I hit something, but it was not strong enough. We had a braided brake cable as well. We were trying to be cool with the rest of the orange accent and also the right angle. So you see the stem of this one is straight compared to this one, it's like this. So here we have 1200 watt motor, the fender again, dual bracket. So a lot more solid compared to this one. It's this, this is terrible. It's not protecting uh, the suspension as well. Compared to this one, it's gonna extend all the way back and offer a lot more protection. The, this suspension always gonna remain clean. For the suspension itself, here we have hydraulic suspension, DNM again adjustable. Compared to this one, it's only a spring suspension. The pivot point, there's not even bushing. It's screws going in the suspension. This is a recipe for disaster. Uh, if we look at the suspension arm themselves, here you have rubber cover everywhere. So it looked well finished, it's clean. The screws are not exposed compared to this one. All the screws are exposed and the grade of the screws themselves are not great. Throughout this whole scooter, the grade of the screws are very low compared to this one. While well, it's 12.9 graded and zinc plated. So this is the best of the best. And they are, of course, all Loctite. It's never gonna become loose on you. Um, so again, the rubber cap here, just make it look more premium and uh, it's hiding the screws. The drum brake itself in the motor is way better. This offer a lot more friction. The tire, again, more adherence to the road, looks better, it's self-healing. At least you get the shock absorption advantage of an air tire. 
uh, without the disadvantage of a honeycomb one. So overall, everything is better and you can see why. And that's pretty much it for the actual direction of the scooter. The last point would be the stopper. On this one, it's a little stopper, a little screw, um, like we have on the air in the city. But for this one, since we had the chance to do it even better from the start, uh, it's a big block of aluminum inside the neck here, so that's never gonna snap on you. You could crash with the scooter the most horrible way and the suspension still gonna work and feel perfectly fine. The actual grade of the bearing is also next level on this one, like we mentioned in the factory video that we're gonna be releasing soon, if it's not already released. Uh, those on the V6, we use Japanese bearing, it's NSK. Compared to this one, it's regular bearing that you see in all other scooters, so it feels right and it's gonna last extremely long. The feeling that you get out of it, 100% worth it. If we go up, you have the folding mechanism. So <laughs> the folding mechanism on the V1 and V2 is different. On the V2 and V3, it's different. The V3, the V4 is different. And from the V4 to the V6, they look the same, but they're also different. We change from the V4 to the V6, all the spring inside, and it's way stronger with the new one. And also this one is coming all from the mold. So on the V4 and the V5, it's CNC'd. This is coming straight up of our molds. So on the V1, I thought it was a fantastic folding mechanism. Again, in the front, so it makes sense with the geometry. Uh, Physic-wise, it makes more sense to have a folding mechanism in the front. And we, it allowed us to pass all the wires inside, so I was pretty satisfied with it, and I loved that shape at the beginning. But when I was seeing employee using it, uh, when we showed this prototype at the Christmas party or at the retreat, everybody was struggling with it. It was just me that it was easy, so... I could not even imagine for a customer that was receiving it. Uh, we needed something that was easier to open. On top of that, every time you were opening and closing the mechanism, it was damaging a little bit the metal inside. Not a lot, but you, I could see that in 500 cycle, well, it would require an adjustment or replacing the parts. And this part comes with the stem, so it would be horrible uh, as a repair. So we needed something that wouldn't damage the metal. There would be no wear and tear and that would be easier to open and close. And that's how we came about this mechanism here. You just push on the button and with one hand, you can open it. I can do it with two fingers like this. That's so easy. And if we look inside, well, it's a gigantic hook that's gonna go on the pin. So super strong. And when you close it, that was also a pretty big deal that this one was not offering. Well, you have a first safety in place, so it cannot open. And then to close it, same thing with two fingers. And this one is rock solid. This one was also solid, but again, after two, three, 500 cycle, it would become loose for sure. If we go up, the stem is also different. The shape is a bit different and how it's made as well. Uh, here, it was a screw, the folding mechanism to the stem. Here, it's welded and we're gonna keep that weld because this is preventing any crack at that level. Then you can see it's still very clean. No, I don't think nobody's gonna mind that. The way that the headset is fixed to the stem is also different. On the V1 to the V5, it was only two screws at the back, like we had on the Air in the City. For the V6, we added it's four screws on the actual chamfer, the angle of the stem, and that's just gonna allow the head to stay tight to the stem, and you feel it. Like, it's, it's so stiff here. Compare here after maybe like a thousand kilometers, there was a loose being created. Then we have the stem light. On the V1, it's only white and it was super bright. It looked good. The finish too was pretty much perfect. The finish of the V1 was better than the V2 to the V5. Uh, but the V2 to the V5 was allowing us to customize the color of the stem. Um, so we needed to change a couple things inside. On the V6, well, the finish is perfect. It's smooth. You cannot even notice a transition between plastic and metal and you can change all the colors and the diffuser on the stem is also fantastic. Now the color, the light, the brightness of the V6 looks perfect. If we look at the headset, everything changed. We changed the handlebar to have a curve and compared to this one with straight, just feels way more natural with a curve. And also when it's that large, you don't want your arm to be like this. You want them to be at a little angle. It just feels more natural. If we look here, we have turning signal on the V6. On the V1, there was no turning signal. The grip handle also changed. So on the V1, we had foam. On the V2, we also had foam. On the V3, we added weird shape. I tried all the different kind of grip and the one that feels the best are the round one. And this is what we're gonna put on all our models as well because it's the same idea as the folding mechanism. Mm. The brake handle on the V1 to the V4, I tried to do custom brake handle. 
We changed the length, we changed the shape, we changed the angle, we changed the sensor, we changed everything. I was just trying to make a custom one and uh, I was not able to. Uh, it's, they didn't feel right and even more importantly, we want the Pro to have all the component on it already tested and on the market. And those brake handle that we have on the air in the city, they're just perfect. And there is a bell integrated. They are three wires, so they offer all sensor signals. So if you brake just a little bit, it's going to be just a little bit of regen. And if you brake full brake handle, it's going to be all the regen apply. You want something gradual like this. And this has been proven. It's coming from a reliable uh, manufacturer. Compared to this one, it was me seeing seeing it, you know. Then we have our famous throttles. This is the V8. This is the fifth version of the V8. Uh, we spent so much time and money on those throttles, but now they're perfect. They feel butter smooth. They lasted 400,000 cycle. That's probably one of the best throttle on the planet. The front plate here was also changed the design. Uh, the way that the wires are fed inside the headset is better here. It won't get damaged. There's seal sealing the headset uh, part to the handlebar. So the water cannot get inside. Um, so I, again, to get the IP66, you need to think about all those small details where the water could go in. If we look at the speaker, this one is horrible. <laughs> uh, and even when we turn it on, it's like the window sound. It's, you can, you can, even if the speaker was good, that sound communicates because <laughs> it's cheap. Uh, this one was basically a two watt. This is a 10 watt speaker. Uh, it sounds way louder. It sounds clearer. The Bluetooth connection, when you want to listen to your music, it's more stable on the V6. Uh, and the way that it's attached to the headset makes a lot more sense on this one. So really happy about this one. And we added a small layer of um, kind of a, a gel, a film that uh, to protect against the water. So if the water do get through the grill, you have another layer of protective film that's going to protect the speaker itself and the rest of the headset. Then we have the top plate. On this one, it was an old phone holder. So you can remember it was adapting to all the phones, but uh, it was not ideal. I didn't like it. And I personally broke my phone on this one. So we knew that we needed to do something better. We reached out to Quadlock and after months and months and months of R&D, we're able to get their module on the headset. Uh, their module is IP66. It's tested for every certification on the planet. And Quadlock is a proven reliable supplier of phone mounts. So really happy that we're able to get them on board with us and now you can clip your phone. And the last point that people were complaining about is the lack of display. Some people say that at this price, the display should be included, uh, that some people don't want to ride with their phone on the scooter. So, well, we just decided to add a display. Um, this one was very hard to do because we designed the scooter to not have the display from the start. So this means you need to rechange the controller. You need to rechange the PCB inside here to fit the display. So it was an absolute mess and so expensive but we were able to fit a display. This is by far my favorite display that I've ever seen on a scooter. It's extremely simple, but the way that it's made with the dot allow you to see it from every angle without any reflection. Really happy about the display. You see the speed, the gear, the turning signal, the error code, uh, and for all the rest of the setting, well, you can check with your phone. On the left side, you have the regen throttle with the horn. The horn, we're able to boost it so loud compared to the V1 through the V5. We were able to tune the setting inside. Um, so it sounds fantastic. It's the M button. We call it the magic button because it's pretty funny all the sound that you can do with it. And, um, and then, like I mentioned, the turning signal that are on the body and the headset itself. The last thing that I didn't mention is a controller sticking out of the body. On this one, it's not, it's inside the body. And we noticed that it was getting too hot compared to this one while it's sticking out, it's cooling ultra fast. And again, this is patented, so don't even try to do it, our competitors. And um, it just looked cool and allow us to do way stronger regen than what we had before. So that's pretty much it. We have the folding mechanics updated, the fenders integrated, the frame that is oil painted with the screws that are 12.9 graded and zinc plated, GPS located, COB illuminated, quad lock activated, hydraulic suspension actuated, six prototype iterated, red dot awarded, competition outdated, hashtag obliterated. For long enough you waited, here's a pro reinvented. Pop, pop.